Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video we'll study about script activity in Azure Data Factory or Synapse Analytics Pipeline. It is also among one of the different transformation activities that the pipelines in Synapse and ADF support. This activity also lies under the transform data section of the standard documentation of Data Factory in the Microsoft Learn page. Here the script activity definition is that we can execute common operations with data manipulation language that is DML and data definition language which is DTL. DML statements include insert, update, delete and select and DDL statements include create, alter, drop that is to create, modify and remove database objects such as tables, indexes and users. Okay, this is also used to invoke a SQL script in one of the following data stores in your enterprise or on an Azure virtual machine VM. So the data stores are SQL database, Synapse Analytics, SQL Server database and Oracle Snowflake. Earlier in the previous video in the same playlist we have studied about the stored procedure activity which supports the first three but not Oracle and Snowflake. So this script activity makes it different from the stored procedure activity that the support for the data stores here is more. That is two more options are available in the script activity. The script may contain either a single SQL statement or multiple SQL statements that run sequentially. The script activity supports multiple statements that can run sequentially. You can use script tasks for the following purposes. Truncate a table, create alter drop, that is the DTL. Recreate fact and dimensions before loading, run stored procedures. Save the row set, return from a query as activity output for the downstream consumption. And in this video, we'll try to execute few queries of DDL as well as DML. So in this video, we'll cover the part of script activity using the DDL and the DML commands and in the next part we'll go with the stored procedure. If we go down here we have the syntax, the properties, description etc. There are few note points okay which we should consider when we create script activity. You can see in the UI how it looks like we have to select the link service then we have to give the query. There are other options like the timeout enable logging, log output, we'll cover this in a different video. So let's go to the SQL queries which we are going to execute in the script activity. Here already we have the create table command that is the DDL data definition. Then we have DML, we are going to insert data into this table, update this table. Okay, again a DML, then create alter drop, these three will be the DDL. We are defining the table. We are adding here a new column, then truncating the table and then completely dropping the table. So all these DDL and DMLs we are going to execute in the script activity. Let's go to the Azure portal. This will be the database which we are going to consider in this video. Let's go to the let's go to the data factory, go to the author tab and create a new pipeline. The pipeline will be named as script activity and we'll take the script activity in the canvas is present inside the general tab with the name as script. Take that in the canvas. First tab is the general tab where we need not make any change. Leave it as is. Go to the settings tab. Here in the link service we have to select the database. If we click on the drop down it will show us two database. As we are going to connect to the CK SQL DB, the link service is already present for this database, which is Azure SQL database, CK SQL DB, we will select that. If it is not there, in your case, just try creating a new link service, okay? After you select the link service, these options will appear, a script option, query and non-query, okay? So we'll go with the database statements that return one or more results. So we'll go with the query option and here, we have to write the different queries which will be executed in this database. Here we have the first query where we are creating a table name as named as books 
with four columns. So we'll just copy and paste here. Okay. Or if the view is not proper, you can click on edit in code editor and here you can see properly the query which we are going to execute through this script. Okay. This is done. Now we'll try to validate the script activity and perform a debug run. So this command that is the create command written in the script activity should create a table here in the database named as books. Currently we do not have it. So we'll refresh and we could see that dbo.books is created. And if we go back to the pipeline, here we could see that it succeeded. In the input, we can see that we have given the query create table and in the output, we could see in the database, we have this books table created. Select star from books. So we have this table created. Okay. The schema is created. So through this script activity, we have executed a DDL command on this database. Next, we are going to execute this DML command insert here in the same script. Okay. And we'll click on debug. Let's wait for the execution to complete. Let's click on refresh. It succeeded. And the input we could see that the query is now given as insert. And here in the database, we could click on run. One row is inserted, which we gave here in the script activity. Okay. Now, next we have update table command. So we can just copy this table where we are going to update the author name from this Colin Hoover to Colin. And next command is alter table books at price int. That is, we want to add a new column into the table. And since we read in the official documentation that we can execute multiple commands here. Okay, multiple SQL statements that run sequentially. So let's try executing both commands together. So let's copy this update table command. Go to the script activity. Here, we'll paste this. And we'll click on this plus sign. So it will open up another query option. And this time we'll add this alter table books. So what happens is that this author should be converted to column and then a new column should be added. So we'll paste this alter. One is a DML. First is the DML, other is the DDL command. Looks good. We'll debug now. In the output, in the database, we'll have a new column here as price and the name of the author should be converted to colon. Let's wait for the pipeline to complete. Let's click on refresh. the activity failed. Let's see what's the error. It says incorrect syntax near the keyword table. Let's see what syntax is incorrect. So here we have written update table table name. It should be just update the table name. Okay. This looks proper now. Let's click on debug. In the meantime, let's edit here too. It should not have this table. Click on refresh. This time it succeeded. In the input, we could see that the script activity has two queries, query one, query two. It is executing sequentially. First, the update command and then the alter table. Let's go back here in the database, click on run. The author name has changed to colon by the update table command and then 
a new column price is also added by altering the table cool next is to truncate the table and drop table these two commands so we'll execute it one by one as we read here that it is used to truncate a table in preparation for inserting data so let's copy the truncate table command go to the adf in the script activity now we don't require the second query so we'll delete it and in the first query option we'll paste the truncate table and the table name click on debug so now this table should be empty. The record which is present here, the first row, now should be deleted. Only the schema will be left using the truncate table command. Let's click on refresh. It's succeeded. Go back here, execute. And now there are no rows, only the schema of the table remains. Let's go back and the final command is drop table, table name. We'll go here in the script activity, paste the command, perform a debug run, wait for it to complete. So this time, complete table will be dropped. Okay, let's click on run. Failed to execute query invalid object name. It didn't find dbo.books in the database. So we have executed the different DDLs and DMLs using script activity in ADF. In next part of the video, we'll cover the stored procedure execution through script activity. Hope you've understood this video. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Bye.